Carol here. Warm welcome once again to page four and to my craft room. I am making a page for the flip part of my Heartfelt Creation wedding album. This is going to seat on the inside page and I say that right away because I want to explain this is going to be the, it's going to be a half an inch in thickness. Yes, there's my bone folders. One's for scoring and one is for um, scoring. One's for scoring and one's for scoring. <laughs> yeah, one is for actually scoring on the scoreboard and the other one is for the fold. Now I want to do uh, some fold outs for this album. So I started with page four and I'm just making a decision here on whether I want it to flip up, out, down, to the side, how many I want to have. And I'm going to tell you something. I have never watched so many album creation videos ever because I guess, you know, you like to watch what you do and, you know, if it's card, you get your inspiration off of card tutorials. And now in my case, I'm doing this wedding album and I'm trying to find some inspiration. Well, I'm not trying, I'm finding a lot of inspiration. And I decided here that the background to this album will be in black. 65 pound card stock, which I'm not used to working with, but I love it. And another thing I love is my uh, art glitter glue. Wow. But I'm going to tell you, this dries quickly. So if you are looking for glue, this is fantabulous. You will love it. So here I decided on this uh, to have one flap that goes up and then two that come out. Now you say, Carol, that can't be too difficult. Oh, if you're just starting to make albums again and you haven't made them in a while, it's not that it's difficult. It does use up your brain cells. You're trying to figure all of this out. You're using punches. You're using dies. In my case here, I am doing the Heart, or actually Martha Stewart heart punch. I think we all have this one if you have punches. And I, I wish I had have done this with the card before it was glued in because you can see it's off to the slant, but it doesn't affect you when you're making an album or a card because you're just going to put a strip of cardstock on there. So now on the one piece here that I'm going to put on the what flips up. I always have to remember this flips up, not to the side, but up. Uh, the easiest way to make a you know, slider, I'll call it, a place for tags is to use your, uh, what is it, your uh, envelope maker because it takes the notches out the side. And look at that, instant, um, I, I wanna say, I have to change my lingo up from making cards or uh, paintings or whatever I'm doing to creating an album. So this is going to be a tab spot. Now I was thinking it would go on the Heartfelt Creation pages, but if you order this Heartfelt Creation uh, instant album, you're going to realize that the pages are six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. But you can't use this if you're going to make your gusset a half an inch thick. So I'm going to end up putting it on the first page because then I have more to deal with, more real estate on the inside page. Obviously it's larger than the actual flip pages. So that's what I'm working with. I'm working with two paper lines, the one I got at Michael's, this one here, it's an actual wedding album. I'm going to tell you the name of it again, it's called White Satin. 
and 65 pound cardstock as far as the black and then I pulled in some bow bunny pink. Now I'm going to seat it on this paper. You know the funny thing about making an album compared to creating a card is the fact, you knew that was going to happen sometime through the video, right? <laughs> is remembering the little things of uh, having your flips go out, and your flips go up and sideways and all the rest of it uh, to make it all pleasing on every side of your actual album. And I have gained a new respect for album makers, I'll tell you that, because there's a lot of thinking going on when you're doing this. You're comparing your uh, papers and you know what one side looks like compared to the other side. Here I'm just using a bit of the Bow Bunny striped collection. And I have a lot of spare parts, I'll put it, that I put over into well, you can call it a scrap pile or a reserve pile uh, as um, a few of my fellow crafters say when they're doing creating albums. And here, I really like this paper. It's kind of like a whole lot of chandeliers, isn't it? It's so pretty. And uh, yeah, so the art glitter glue. I tell you what, you don't want anything to happen to this. So I will use my ATG gun. You can use double-sided tape. I want to use everything that is quick, you know, and not taking up too much time like the double-sided tape does. So the ATG has come in handy. Then the art glitter glue. The thing with that is it dries so quickly. Always keep that in mind. And then I'm going to cover the black. So, you know, if you get anything on it, you know me. I'm either setting something on it or, uh, yeah, isn't that pretty? I really love this bow bunny paper with the flowers behind there. And believe it or not, I went into my stash and I had three dies, three flower dies that matched this paper perfectly. And I thought, you know what? I'm instead of having a tag slide out of that piece I'm creating right here. I thought wouldn't it be nice to have something that flips out, you know, over top of the paper and have it a shaker and have it match. There you go. I just, I should have slowed that down. I use the same thing as my uh, envelope maker to make the exact same cut. I'm just taking a little bit off there. It's hard to measure that and get it perfect. I tried my best to have the same amount of black on the punch out there and it's uh you know, it's teaching me a whole lot of things. Now, one thing it taught me is I'm not going to put a lot of the black soot on the paper. I think I changed up here to keep my papers clean because I have a way of rubbing up against the ink and getting it on the white paper. So I chose to keep the edges clean after this. So I'm going back, unclogging my art glitter glue. I just, yeah, a new respect for this glue. I, I never used it for such a long time. I was using the Nouveau glue. And before that, I think I was using, I have one here that I haven't cracked into yet, is the Tombow Mono Multi. I'll have to crack into that because that's a good glue as well. And there you have it. I have the tab created for this next creation that I'm going to do. And you could make this as a card. You really could. You could have this on the inside and just have a tag coming out with whatever you would put on the front of an actual folded card would be really pretty. And here you can see I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fronts, let's call it, to create. That's the key. You have seven areas. So you have the one that I just created. Then on top of that, the two sides and the flip and the middle. Oh yeah, you're a busy little beaver doing this. So there's the dies. I will leave the link to the supplies that I used. And I wanted it to be floating 
flowers. I wanted you to be able to see through it. So obviously I'm going to use the acetate on the other side. And like I said, this could be a card as well. So you're getting the best of both worlds with this album. I do make, an, later on, I do make a card to go inside one of the um, pull-out areas. So you'll see that. So here I got out some silver paper, some 6x6 six six silver paper, and I die cut this. I'm trying to find, <laughs> yeah, you know, when you die cut it first, which you have to do, you're trying to find where it fits in, right? And uh, yeah, you spend a little time on that, I do. And then you have to glue it in such a way, in such a way that it doesn't have glue all over, you know? So that was a challenge. And I'm keeping it black. So here's the other challenge, to keep it clean. <laughs> yes. So anywho, I cut that out and I'm going 100 miles an hour. I almost had to with the two and a half hour tutorial. I think it was about 33 hours of uh, camera time that I had on this that I tried to edit down for you. And the beauteous thing about it is you can just scan through it. If it's too long for you, I totally understand it. So here I cut this out of the Bow Bunny collection that I had. And, excuse, oh, you know he's, yeah, and he doesn't care. Glue, cutting blade, it doesn't matter to him. He just walks right across. He loves things that are gooey and sticky. So that's good. Yes, that was a nice visit. So I put some of this uh, hard felt creation. It's like glossy accents. It's called uh, 3D Crystal Lacquer. I had to look behind me. And you're going to uh, situate, I am going to put those flowers on a different spot. It's going to be a tuck spot. But I saw them on, they match on that paper and I thought it was really nice. So this wedding album will be pink, gray, and silver and white. So let's get back to it. I want a shaker. So obviously I need to put some acetate on the back of here to put all my shaker bits on it. And it's going to be like crystal see-through hearts, really pretty. And I put three layers of this flower because you're going to see it on each side. You're going to have a shaker on one side and a shaker on the other side. And so I made it three high. So I'm working on the back of the front layer that I put down that you could see there. I'm just holding it in with the tape so it doesn't fall out of the hole because I have to be very careful to get that glue, the art glitter glue, just right on the corners. You don't want the flowers to fall out, but they can't be secured any other way but with glue. So making it three high with the thickness really held it in that uh, die cut space for me. And I'm really satisfied with it. And then you have the acetate going over top. I am using the Durie strips, the really fine one eighth of an inch thick uh, double sided tape or double sided foam to lift it up just a tad. I only went with one layer, which is nice. I didn't want it too high and uh, just enough to hold those sequins. And you know we're gonna have to co cover them with either pearls. I went with pearls and diamonds. And I'm going to do this album. If you're just joining me, it's going to be a fabric and paper uh, album, wedding album. So I will be using the paper collection, but I'll also be using fabric. And I'm going to decorate a box for it to go into. So that'll be nice. And I'm throwing in a bonus of what magnets to use when you're doing an album. I didn't have anybody tell me which albums would be the best, although I used to buy the uh, basic gray uh, magnets until I found this site. And I'm able to get, uh, you know, 50 of them for the price of a pack of 20. So that's kind of nice. And I'll share that with you on my blog. So here I'm just getting out the white diamonds, or excuse me, the pink hearts in the glitter. But the funny thing was some of the hearts, when I guess when it went through the machine, didn't cut fine. So I had to pick those out of there. They're kind of thick 
and I didn't want them to raise the acetate up any more than I had to have it up and I'm just taking the little bits off of the tape that I'm going to add this and isn't that pretty and it matches that paper perfectly how do you do that Carol I don't know I think it's called our stash right we go in our stash and then we just see something and it's like wow how can that be yes because I got these uh, flowers and I organ oh <laughs> pizza time anybody wanna uh, it's a pepperoni, we call it a Hawaiian pizza because I love uh, pineapple on my pizza. So I'm having a pizza break while you stare at these flowers. I will be munching down uh, Hawaiian pizza. It's so good. We get it here in our town at a place called the Barrel Pizzeria. Best, best pizza ever. So here we go. Thank you, Debbie. I'll leave her link. She has a wonderful YouTube channel that made me that beautiful um, topper for my glue. Yes, my dangles. So here we go. I'm just getting situated. I'm standing up and looking for stuff. I think we do a lot of that when we're doing an album. Um, especially an album because I'm doing a lot of pages on it. But uh, I had stuff everywhere. And I don't like to work unorganized with it you know, just dumped out on my island. So I stop and clean it up and then I keep going. And anywho, here I needed some stickers. So I picked out, I wanted silver. And there was enough in here to do right around that, the silver flower. So I chose this one. It's uh, plain, but you know what? It covers the dury strip. And that's what I was concerned about. I just wanted it to be covered and look nice so i got both effects with this and like i said this would make a lovely card you just don't have to score it down a third like i did so i made the flap so a third of it went over top of the um what is what do you call that a pull out or this is the pull out of the area that I made. It'll come to me here. All of this new lingo. Woo! Yes! I love roses, don't you? Just cheers me up when I see that. So here we go. I got that situated all the way around to cover the tape and the acetate and I was going to put that, see up in the left hand top there, I was going to put that fancy pearl thing going on around it, but it was too much. It was just too much. So I wanted to show you something. If I was going to pick up little things, you know, with your picker upper stick, with your pick stick that you pick up things, if you don't have one and you have a lot of sequence of things you want to pick up, I'm just going to show you here. This is the pick stick, this thing here, and it sometimes loses its sticky. See, I'm trying to uh, get it to stick. So what you do is you just go to your drugstore and get some orthodontic wax. If you have braces, you know, I worked in ortho for so long and I had one of these. And you just put it at the end to get it sticky again or take an old paintbrush, anything with a stick on the end of it, grab a bit of ortho wax and this wax will be so sticky for such a long time. Look at that. That's all you have to do. So I wanted to throw it in there. You don't need a picky sticky, you just need some orthodontic wax. And look at all that wax, it'll last you forever picking up sequins or all kinds of things with it. And it'll go over top of something that isn't sticky any longer. See, look at that, I did put it at the end of there. And uh, yeah, so let's move forward, I'm doing a close up on this. I'm gonna put my bling, now I tried to do this bling on a roll with the art glitter glue. But I had to um, move so fast with things drying that uh, the acetate is over top of the, um, of the, uh, what is it, the foam tape there, the Jervis foam tape. That's what I'm trying to cover, and it was perfect. But I'm pretty sure I, had, I took it apart. I started using the art glitter glue. Then I went to the, the, Arlene's Mac Tac or Tac Tac, uh, what is it there? 
not, I, I don't know what that is. Tacky glue? I think it's tacky glue. I just put it on one of the rolls there upside down to uh, get the bling on there and keep it down at the bottom of the bottle. But I ended up lifting it up, believe it or not. I'm pretty sure I did it with my hot glue gun. Because I, my acetate are page protectors, the acetate's really thick. I use page protectors. That's what I buy at my stationery store. So I'm pretty sure I took it up and I put the hot glue on there later on. I might have taken it out of the edit, but I wanted to let you know that's what I did because it was metal going on acetate and I wanted to be sure it would stick. So here we go. I'm just taking off the corners and we're going to proceed. I'm putting some white paper over the black and then of course we have to have the same paper that was on the actual um, pocket. There it is. Pocket. Oh yes. I remembered. So the pocket is the pink uh, flower and so is the paper. So here we go. Yes. I'm, what am I doing here? Oh, ATG all over the place and then my art glitter glue and we're going to put it down, secure it. Oh, I did the edges on this. I'm pretty sure though I stopped doing the edges because I found myself, yeah, you can see this uh, with it on my fingers and I held it up, look at that. And then I was putting it all over and I thought, no, I got to stop that. I'm too prone to uh, boo-boos. So here we go. These are one of the die cuts that I cut out from, oh, I'd like to say it's, uh, I have it all beside me. I'll have to get it out later, but it's one of the flourishes. I did the corners. I punched out a whole lot of the pink corners. This is the pink paper, like the plain paper there is the three pink paper pack at Michael's. You get three shades of pink for the price of a full pack. It's a pretty good deal. I think it was $6.99 and it is, uh, I think it's a uh, hundred pound weight. It's pretty thick. It's really nice. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's 65 pound, but I could be wrong. I'm going to leave the flourish empty at the top so you can slide in something underneath you know picture because this is a wedding album so we're going to need a lot of spaces to put pictures there we go slide it right up like that and I'm really happy with this so I'm going to make a tiny tag to go there and aren't the flowers the die cut flowers beautiful there it is just slide that heart up there I started going crazy and sliding a whole lot of things until I was satisfied and I ended up getting I think a little quote that I put on there. And this was the day I took to just die cut. I grabbed a lot of my dies and went crazy just sitting there for the day and die cutting so that I could do just this. Just sit and create and use what I'd already cut. Now I'm going to take some acetate because I decided to put a heart on there so that I have a heart with acetate on the back. And this is, like I said, my page protectors. It's very thick. And I'm going to glue it on here and then I'll leave the top portion open so you can slide a picture down in it. And isn't that sweet? Love this art glitter glue. I can't say enough about it. It dries quick and it's super, super sticky. Yes, super sticky. If you are a card maker, you're not one to do albums, this would make a fabulous card just like that. Put a little tag inside of it. And I think it will make a nice, let's say, a six by six card. It's beautiful. Or four, you know, make the flap four inches and the base six inches and have it fold over. And I think it's real pretty to find a die that matches the actual paper. Here I'm just securing the flourish so that it holds down. And I guess I went back and I used my hot glue gun and I went over the silver. I'm pretty sure I did because, and I did the, <clears throat> the tacky glue, but I know I took it off. I really do. I know I took this off. Maybe I didn't do the diamonds. Okay, let me go back. But this was really slippery. It was making me nervous. Okay, yeah, I'm just pushing it over so it's even on each side with your ruler. It's an easy way to situate it even. 
and it's the Tacky Glue by Arlene's. But you know what? I am, I don't know, one of the areas, oh, I know what I did. Okay, let's go back. I'm just going to leave it for now. I'm waiting for it to dry. I like the way the um, wave sticker looks behind it, but I'm pretty sure I changed this up. Or I added another gusset to close it because those poils are pretty close. Now, this is where I made the decision to not use the black on my cardstock any longer. I can tell just by looking at it. I thought, Carol, no, 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 no. Don't put it on that white sheet and then put your hands all over it. And there we go, art glitter glue. So quick and easy. And then just get yourself a little spatula thing to slide over it so that the glue proportions itself all over the paper nicely and uh, then we're going to put this on there isn't it nice if we could craft this fast it's just beauteous and i'm thinking to myself it's a wonder that that uh, ink didn't go all over when i took the spatula to it yeah i'm oof yes the pink hearts the shaker pink hearts so i'm drying it really quick you can see it was just a quick and went right over it just to see if that uh, tacky glue was going to hold. Then I had my cello bag here. I called it a saline bag for so long, but that's my hot dogs I get over in Buffalo, my saline hot dogs. And I had, <laughs> yeah, how our brains work, right? So I just thought I'd share some of my creative ideas in case you have a similar uh, piece of cardstock, you know, with flowers, what you can do. And I thought I'd make another pocket. You can't have enough pockets on an album, can you? I just love the idea of pockets. So many talented album makers on YouTube, isn't there? Oh, I was just blown away. But you know, when push comes to shove, it's great to have the inspiration, but it's fun to create your own ideas. I had too many flowers going across there to put it there, but I did make a pocket out of it. And I chose some pretty cool ideas. And like I said, I put my die cuts, separated the colors, put it inside envelopes so I could just go through the envelopes. I didn't throw it in a big basket and have to rifle through it. You know, I put gold, silver, white, and black. And that's pretty well what I had to work with. And now I am just finding what would look good with this. I end up using that. Don't go very far. I end up using that as well. It's so much fun. It's so much wonderful creative time to do an album, I have to say. But it does take some thinking. It does take some thinking. I have to share that with you. And not only that, you have to remember which way your flips are flipping, you know? <laughs> which way your flaps are going. <laughs> that would be a horrible thing. I can't even imagine putting everything down and then you go to flip it out and it's upside down. Oh, there's always a remedy though. This is that beautiful sponge sugar. I'm pretty sure that sponge sugar is the prettiest pink in the Distress Oxide line, I think. And it matches perfectly, doesn't it? It's light enough and so sweet. And I just went over the, t the part that flips up. That's all I did. And uh, dries, you know, really nice. I just love Oxide inks. So now I went to my apothecary and grabbed some ribbon, really fine pink ribbon. And I had these stickers. Make sure you put hot glue behind or so I'm taking the tape off the back. Uh, when you buy these stickers or you have them in an album, uh, whatever, however you get them, they cut, they are raised up and I wanted this to be flat. That's what I'm trying to explain here. So I just grabbed a scraper, took that sticky off the back. Oh yeah, nobody's going to see that. Then you're going to put our glitter glue on it. And I wanted to have it flat, like I said. I don't want anything sticking up more than I have to have it because I'm closing pages, right? So I used some of the Arlene's Tacky Glue. That's really nice glue as well. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Tacky Glue. So any glue. There's my pick sticks that I got a hundred of them on that channel that is called Wish. Uh, yeah, I saved myself four dollars on that, which is a good savings. And I like to use it to put glue down and I like the pick sticks to also um, put the glue down and pick the glue up. Yes, it's a never-ending cycle, isn't it? I've got them right here beside me. 
and so yeah sweet everything's in hearts there's nothing sweeter than to do a wedding album that's for sure so I have some uh, row of pearls going across dream of tomorrow and now I'm going to get my orthodontic thread out yes and it works perfectly I got some of my um, uh, jewelry out pieces that are in silver I took two of one style of heart and two of another style of heart made the teensiest little bow there for the corners and we're going to do that we're going to apply two of one heart that's full and two that have the center out i thought it was really feminine really pretty i uh, just gave a beautiful appearance and then we're going to weave that ribbon through all of those circles and then of course every little dot's going to get a pearl oh yes that's why it's fun to craft for me in the evenings you know it seems like a more relaxing time than during the day, uh, for me anyway. So here we go. We'll put it through. The orthodontic uh, thread is wonderful, just wonderful. It's floss, actually. It's dental floss threaders, if you're looking for them. They'll last you a lifetime. You get about six in a pack, six or eight, and it works as a needle. And you just put your wonderful, um, here I thought what I'd do is braid it. I was going to, see, <laughs> I put a clip on there and I was going to put the braid through. But it took the femininity away from the actual dye with all of those circles. It just, I don't know, it was too thick for me. So I said, forget that idea. Just put it off to the side. Keep threading, Carol. Keep going through those holes wonderful idea as well for a card. I just want to encourage you if you don't make albums consider all of the tags and the things that I make here to be an inspiration for you to make a card as well. And while you're pulling this through with your floss threader I'm just going to remind you to watch that it doesn't twist on you at some point and then you have to go back and untwist. Uh, how do I know that? Oh, guess why? Yeah, I did it. And you get all the way around, and all of a sudden you see that twist, but it's at the beginning. <laughs> and so you have to go back and, you know, get your pokey tool and turn them all around. Yeah. So here we go. Oh, yes, look how fast I can go. It's beautiful. And we're going to uh, sew. Yes, sewing. Plus, on the pages, I am going to get my wonderful uh, Singer sewing machine going because I have some beautiful uh, patterns on the sewing machine that make hearts. So I'm going to incorporate that into this album. And that's what I'm telling you right there to make sure it doesn't turn on you because it did happen to me a few times. Nothing happens to me once. Do you ever notice that? I will make the same mistake. I don't know how many times, but anyway, I made a tiny little heart for the corners. At the top, they're just see-through little uh, metal hearts and at the bottom they're full metal hearts. I think it's so pretty. I love going with the heart theme. And then our glitter glue and poils. Here we go. Just put those pearls all over and you see the little diamonds in that row of daisies, the black little daisy pattern. Isn't that so pretty? And then Dream of Tomorrow over top I put a row of pearls. Pearls and diamonds, oh, and hearts. You can't get enough of them. So there you have it. I managed to not bore you through that. And we're going to move on. And we have to make a little tag for inside of this. Isn't that dye nice? This dye is, um, let me see, it's not too far away from me. So I'm going to talk and look at that. But it is a uh, spellbinder. Nestability dye. I'm going to try and leave all of that on my blog. Excuse me, I'm going back up on my chair. Nestabilities. And this is an LDRS Creative Tag dye. I love this one because it has the same daisy pattern in the dye at the bottom as those daisies up there from another set. And then I'll put pearls inside of the nested opening. I'm going to grab a row of these pearls. Remember, I got these pearls at the dime uh, at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. And I got a 
great big huge roll of it so I just put it through like you were going to do a normal knot and then I, I twisted it back on itself to make it look like a bow so pretty just love everything about working with pink black and white I think it's beautiful and that there the polka dots there that was in the um, pink set oh yes hearts everywhere you just can't get enough of hearts look at that I just bend it down on itself and it looks like I tied a pearl bow creative work is so nice and there's the bow bunny see all the papers to the right a lot of tags a lot of um, goodness here I'm filling the holes up obviously I did the front and the back of this tag so that I was able to put the pearls inside these little holes that the die makes this is an LDRS creative die like I said it's beautiful and uh, yeah getting the pearls out. And I actually use stickles towards the end. Isn't that something? Uh, all the supplies, if it is stored for me, if it's stored away and the door shut, it generally is in there for life. But I was opening doors and drawers and getting out as much as I could. It really helped me to experiment with the products I already have. So here you go. I thought of this too. Isn't that gorgeous, Rose? that is the gray, but it was just a little bit too long and it covered the paper too much. So I left that out and uh, yeah, I'm going 500 miles an hour. I wanted to have black, um, oh no, here I used the crystal lacquer, glossy accents, Arlene's glue will do the same job. And here you go, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, how pretty is that tag? It's really pretty. I love the way that this bends down. Please forgive me for how fast I went. But this is where I got my, there it is, the hot glue. I raised up these um, pearls, these little pearlet things that I have here on a roll. And I did put the hot glue. And because the acetate is so thick, because it is page protectors, it held it really well. And I don't have to worry about it coming off. So we have pearls on one side, diamonds on the other. And here we go. That's in there. Look at that. It will hold photos down. It's nice and heavy. I'm cutting this so I have some black on the edges. And I don't use it there, but it was nice to have it after the um, glossy accents or liquid. Anything you have that makes a shine is on there. And there's the one die. I'm going to take out these dies uh, to use. I didn't end up using that one on there, but I have enough cut out in my little box of stash that I didn't have to worry on what I was going to use. The, if I liked something and I needed to put it in corners, and here I didn't want to go to the cream. I don't know what I was thinking, but I thought if I liked the pattern, I would just go grab the dye and do it in white. So I was looking at all my cream uh, previous cutouts that I had in my stash. And I thought, you know what, I could get out the Distress Oxide and go over all of it. I could have. But, you know what, I like the, I like to stay with the white. I didn't want to switch it up. And I didn't want to put the Oxide ink all over it. There we go. We're going into the stash. Oh, yes. Stash is wonderful, isn't it? You can just go and, uh, oh, these are the corners. I decided to make corners. And then use incorporate ribbon to hold down a tag, which can come out and put a picture in there. You can put a cute little uh, 4x4 picture, 3x4 picture, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, I'm just helping you. I just want you to see the process as I was creating here, you know, together. We could see what I took out and what I left in. So I grabbed my Altenew little die cutter. It was quick and easy. Uh, took the guts out and I did these three thick. Aren't they pretty? Just beautiful little corners to have. And then I was only going to do one until I decided I wanted to put the ribbon in there. And obviously, if you're going to be pulling on it, you want to do it thicker. You know, I could have even done it like five layers thick. It was so nice. Here I'm just measuring to see that it's even on each side, how um, 
how far up I placed the one on the left so that the one on the right was um, in the same spot. And that's why liquid glue is nice because you have some, you know, moving ability to move it where you want it. And the nice detailed lid on the Art Glitter Glue is nice too because you can work those real detailed areas nicely. So I'm just erasing the, oh, right over top. This one I'm talking about, that's how I create. Look at that. My machine right over the top of what I just created with glue, by the way. Oh, yes. And then I don't even, look at, <laughs> I just glued it down. Oh, I don't know sometimes. It must give people viewing this a heart attack to watch it. And I needed to add, uh, I decided to double it to see if I could get two in one pass. I'm not sure if I did, but uh, did I? Yes, I did. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And we're going to put them three high and put a little ribbon through there. Oh, I tell you, sometimes when you're creating, these things come to you. There, uh, you have your dyes all all around you, and you're focused on knowing you have to do corners, knowing you have to do flips, knowing you want to match things. It's so pretty to me, and I've been doing it over the last what was it a week ago that I did page number three. So it's been the last week I've been creating this and having so much fun. And I'm so pleased that you're joining me, especially if you don't make albums and you're joining me. How nice is that? I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I can't. Uh, oh, make sure you put paper underneath whatever you don't want glued down, right? So if you're going to stabilize it with, say, glossy accents or something, uh, you will have... You don't have to worry about getting it on the paper you put on there. So that's why I put this sheet of paper while I'm adding the three layers. Well, actually, I'm adding two layers to make it three high. And here you have it. Take your pokey tool, get it all situated. And isn't that pretty? It just is a pretty little die. Um, I think it's a corner die. You'd have to have a pretty big corner to go across there. I thought this was just you know, just the way to go. Oh yeah, and back to the pretty pink ribbon. That's thrift store ribbon, I can tell by looking at the top of it. And uh, yeah, there we go. Into the floss threader. Love these floss threaders for sewing like this. I was having a little number trying to get it through there for some reason, but you shouldn't have any problems. Come on, get it through there. Don't tear it off. There you go, and then put it through the floss threader and do it again and watch that it doesn't twist on you. Here we go. See, it's easier the second time. <laughs> Everything's easier the second time. It's always easier after you make a mistake, isn't it? Then we're going to tie a cute little bow there. Just grab my reverse tweezers, hold it down somewhere, and tie your bow. There we go. Oh, yeah, it takes me longer to put the tweezers on there to tie the bow than it does to just do it with my thumb on it or something or my pinky whatever. Look at that. Doesn't that look like it was made for there? Like you bought a kit and it was supposed to go there. But it's not. It's all out of my cranium. Oh yes. So now we're going to get out a little tag. And for the record, why not? You can use this to put, to frame out a little photo, a little wedding FOMO. FOMO. <laughs> photo. It's not a promo, a FOMO, it's a photo. And here we go, you can tell I'm getting tired. Oh, I did the edges, fancy that. I tell you that I don't do it, but I don't do very many of the edges, but I think it's because the pink had distress around it. So I, but you know, you slide things around and why would I risk that white paper? You know, that beautiful intricate side papers that the ribbon went through with distress ink going on it. I don't know, I seem to always test myself, you know, to see whether I want to make it again and again. <laughs> yes. I did see something I would like to get. I'm going to call my stationery store. I saw this ruler that uh, has all the measurements on the ruler, like it has the, it shows you, like you're reading it. So it has the 
uh, inches and then it has the sixteenth of an inch, a quarter inch. Here I'm just placing it on the black cardstock so that I have a border. And then I'm going to cut the border out with my new, yes, I just got these blades. Oh, does it make life easier. But anyway, on that ruler, I saw it on a YouTube video and I thought it was fantabulous because you can read a quarter of an inch, a sixteenth, an eighth, um, and then flip it over and get centimeters and millimeters. It was, yeah, I'm going to go to my stationery stores because I'm, sh because I'm sure they have it there. And here's my little stash box as I'm creating, and then I'll go put it in the right place later. It's nice to have it all contained in one spot. Then I'm going to put my corners down. Oh, yes. And this one, I didn't, uh, I, I had to watch that I left a little space to slide a picture under it. You can see that I left a little bit. So that, I think it's three by four. Then you're going to put it down, and isn't that pretty? I just think it all matches so nice like this, for the record. And I'm going to take a little corner piece off of there and then slide it in, and it's perfect. There we have it. I can't believe that I'm risking doing it with scissors, too. Oh, yes, I was taking risks all over the place. I don't know what I was doing there. I'm probably just cleaning up the edges. And here we go. Oh yeah. Getting a little bit of glue off the corners that I have on there. And slide it in there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love that. I love that die. The nestability dies. It comes in a set of three. It has the frame, then it has the smaller frame, and then it has the two little filigree corners like that the white ones I'm talking about as I'm sliding it in. And there you have it for the record. So pretty, not overdone, slides down inside there. And oh, this is where I started taking it off. It it didn't hold down with the glue. It probably would have if I had left it overnight. Let me say that. The glue will work if you leave it for some time. But I didn't have overnight to do it and I wasn't trusting uh, in the morning me forgetting to do this and um, you know then it ends up falling apart on somebody and that's not good so here we go let's get that uh, hot glue on those page protectors the acetate page protectors is thick enough to take the glue so here's where I thought okay um, oh it lifted up a little bit of paper on the flowers there so I just went over it with the uh, with the ink just lightly lightly and then it just seemed to disappear it's great isn't it and here you go now we have to do the sides in the middle so i'll put a piece of white cardstock i'm really close sometimes i forget to pull that camera back i apologize for that because it's like whoa look at there there we go that's better isn't it out comes the atg gun we're going to set down it's always black then the white, and then whatever paper I am working with. Got to clean out that detailed tip, and off we go, having some fun. And it just pulls together, doesn't it? And you're thinking the whole time, like, okay, what, what do I want to put on the two outer ones? As I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to put on this? Because, oh, I took out the fuse ruler, the metal ruler, and then I had the dream weaver. Uh, ruler that I had bought for doing stencils you know for putting it there it is there for putting your paste in your stencil and just sliding it across there and then I don't you know it's just quick and easy but I'll say this you have to be reminded it's metal and you don't want that metal catching on your paper so I think I do switch out after some time I didn't want to risk it but it is good you know if that if that was in let's say um you know, that flexible uh, stuff that spatulas are made out of, whatever. That would have been wonderful to have it wide. But I did see it there on my island, and I thought, oh, I'll give it a try and share it with you because you never know. It's nice to have those for doing stencils with your paste. And there, tape, 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 glue, glue, glue. 
and I put some black over top and there see I slid it across because I knew if anything happened to that I was putting paper over it yes so that's why and look at that I'm using the black soot on this I can't believe it because I know I did stop it must have been because, oh, and then I even switched up to a handheld, uh, uh, instead of the ATG, I thought, oh, I have all of these runner tape things. I think I'm going to use those because they're pretty nifty. And there you, look at that. Wipe it across and swipe it down and all your glue is situated. So pretty. Now we're moving on to something else. Let's see. And then you have to be reminded to put the right, uh, uh, paper on each side. You know that the patterns are not upside down. So much thinking. Yes, here I'm just going in and measuring for the acetate. I want to cut a piece off because I love pictures behind acetate. Uh, and this is, I think it is my page protectors as well. I've kind of switched. There you go. Uh, I'm not sure if I, oh, I know what I do here. This is fantabulous too. I end up Oh, I'm just wiping it down so I don't have any of the static. I cut it on the angle, and I'm just going to use one angle cut to make a pocket. I'm just going to have an angle cut, and then I'm going to be able to use some rub-ons. I found some wedding rub-ons, and I so wanted to incorporate them into this album. So I took my Fiskars, I cut it on the slant on the triangle, and we're going to put that on there so crazy pretty and I needed to have oh yeah look at that acetate who'd have thunk right so let's get those stickers out rub-ons I've had these for ages so I opened that up and I love the idea that it had the pink and the gray the white so so pretty it has the rings and the hearts and it's kind of cattywampus and they weren't dried up. That's what I was really excited about. I was getting some on the paper. Put some paper underneath if you're doing it because you will end up taking some of the rub off onto it. See what I did there? I wanted to see whether it would uh, come off easily and it did. It did with the pokey tool but I didn't end up using uh, both sides of the acetate obviously so I just used uh, one half of it and move forward but if you don't press hard if you're light 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 on the touch it will wipe off nicely and you don't waste the other side oh I even took oh yes I'm getting right into there I took my gooby gone and I didn't want to waste that even though I didn't use it there we go I'm grabbing it see I didn't use it but you can see it is cleaned up nicely and then there's where it goes. Isn't that pretty? No, get that out of there, Carol. But you could do a bottom one or, you know, reverse it, whatever way you want it to go. And uh, let's see. Yes, I know I do all of the edges because this rub-on was so pretty. I just wanted to incorporate it into the album. And I'm telling you, talk about using your stash. I was stash shopping galore. That's why we have it there, I guess, right? Look at that. I did have to get a little bit off of that. And you want to be sure when you do this that you flip it so that you have the actual um, sticky side underneath, like your rub-on underneath the acetate um, when you do it. I guess, you know, I guess when you think about it, you are sliding something underneath so it wouldn't matter. I have to see what I did. Did I leave it on the top or did I put it underneath? I am not sure. I probably left it on the top because you're going to slide pictures in and out, in and out. So I'm pretty sure that it, yes, it did. It went on top. So just delete what I said before this. <laughs> put your rub on on the top if you're going to slide anything underneath it. And then you can put your really thin double, I think I used a sixteenth of an inch double-sided score tape underneath the uh, rub-on so you didn't see it. So that was nice. And I pre-cut all of these little things. I just wanted to show you there at 100 miles an hour what it looks like. But you'll see it in the pictures at the end. Hopefully you make it through. 
Yeah, this is a long one, isn't it? I so apologize. I did so many things and I didn't want to leave it out. I just wanted to share the entire experience with you. And uh, here I am just putting the glue on the edges. Oh, okay, let me just see what I did. Did I not use stuff? Oh, I did use uh, our, the glue. Oh my. Just forget what I said about the 16th of an inch double-sided tape, I guess, as well. Our glitter glue is fabulous. Yeah, so it just puts something over top, obviously. I was smart enough to do that, or I would have, but I took my tool and rubbed the rub off, rub-ons off. So it would have been rub-offs. Yes. <laughs> there you have it. Isn't that gorgeous? This paper line, honestly, I have had that in my stash forever. I mean, Bo Bunny, I can't even remember when I got this, but as I was putting this under the acetate there, the one that's underneath, I thought, wow, we could use that as a slide, you know, to cuddle on the edges and have it as a slider thing. I gotta get used to this lingo, what they all are, tabs and sliders and uh, pull-outs and pull-ins and awesome. So I'm going to put that behind white and behind black of course. But then all of a sudden, I'm not sure if it's this one, so I'm not going to commit myself as saying that's what I did, but I took out my craft knife and I went around the top portion of the gray where that beautiful rose is situated and made it into a slider thing to put a picture into. It's wonderful what comes to your mind as you're creating. It really is. You can push yourself to levels you didn't think you were able to uh, actually do. You know, look at I used that Dreamweavers. There we go. Before I put the papers on the back. That's what's awesome about having the craft mat down instead of the Tim Holtz glass mat. Although you can cut on that. But uh, it really does eliminate the lights and the thought of uh, cutting on glass. Something about that. I don't know what it is. But I do have the Tim Holtz glass mat. And as soon as they come out with a cover for it so you don't get the glare off of your light lights, in my case, uh, I will put it back on my island. So here we go. I am just adding to the bottom portion here because you are going to slide something underneath. So don't... Uh, oh yeah, this Dreamweaver thing is really coming in handy. And I'm talking about glare and what do I use? Stainless steel. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's not that bad, right? So here we go. Uh, you can put pictures behind this. It's all about the pictures. It's all about the slide-ins, slide-outs. I just love it. I'm having a ball. I know that, um, yeah, I'm doing the edges again. Oh me, oh my, I don't know what I'm thinking because I know I stopped doing the edges but we have a long ways to go yet, right? <laughs> so, yeah, let's, uh, if you're still with me, hey, I'm so thankful. I'd love to name all of my subscribers by your name. You don't know how much it means to me. Uh, and it isn't about how many subscribers I have. You know that. It's about the wonderful subscribers I do have. I do believe I have the most wonderful friends that join me in my craft room. It makes it delightful for a crafter to know that the people viewing appreciate your work. They take the, You take your time out of your day and you spend it with me in my craft room. So I do appreciate that. We are going to use that little tag. There's the word tag. We're going to use these tags to the extreme. So here I'm going to put some black and white behind almost everything. And I don't know what I'm doing here, but when I turn it over, I put little corners on it. I actually have a, a tab thing to put the corners on there. Isn't that awesome? I found that when I was cleaning out my punches, my punching unit. It's amazing when it breaks through the dust, what you find. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being honest here. And then I had, these are from the dollar store where nothing's a dollar as well. The corners and you want to cut around uh, they have this sticky on them so that on the top of it it's not sticky see right there almost looks like Batman wings you want to cut that off because it just doesn't look appealing and you still have room to slide a picture underneath even though if you cut the tabs off and I did try to remember that each row is a different pattern 
remember before I put all different patterns on there. I wasn't my I'm just making sure that you can slide this on. I do grab a piece of acetate. I do remember that. I put there you go. My brain is somewhat still with me. I hope yours is too as you're feeling this. And I'm going to put acetate on there so that you can slide the picture underneath the acetate. I'm just going to place it there so you can take it in and out. And it uh, it's not glued there for you. You can actually take it out and slide your picture in. And you know, I did try to be mindful of the sizes of pictures because you can get so small you don't get pictures that, you know, that small. But when we get to those five pages that I'm creating on, now I have both sides of the actual album. They both have exactly what I'm going to use on them. I have the flip portion on the opposite side of the teapot and teacup and then uh, I ha you know you have you make so much in the process you have to remember what you've made right here I'm going to put some diamond bling across here right there with my hot glue more diamonds yes you can't have too many diamonds right whether they're real or not real they're if they're sparkly I'm in on it yes uh, so here we go um, what am I doing here? Making sure it's not all globby gooey. And uh, isn't that pretty? It's all about the pretty. When you do a wedding album, uh, you have to be mindful of the person that is going to be using it and what they're going to use it for. Here I'm just putting a nice back on it so that I'm actually going to put me and you. I found this and I saw, I think it's me and you. And it matches the memory card that I use. It's in the same font. Uh, I don't know if I've showed it. I don't think I've showed it to you yet, but we will get there. And it's just black and white. Stands out like that. Uh, what I was saying is I try to be mindful if it was my wedding album, you know. And I was just uh, thinking about that. My husband and I have been married for 45 years. Plus, we dated five years before I was married, so we've been together for 50 years. And I'm 65, so you can do the math. We started to date in high school. And, uh, shh, don't say anything, but I was 15 weeks, 15, and in love. <laughs> yeah, so um, why am I being quiet? I'm the only one sitting in here. Yes, but, you know, you're in high school, and that's what happens and we've been together ever since so that's awesome 50 years wonderful and so here we go and now oh yes now if you have pattern paper this is kind of a slight pattern you have so much of it your eyes get ooh, you know what am I using but you have to be focused on even if you make a mark or you put a little sticky note on it of which way the pattern's going because here's the paper I'm using and you can see it's very easy to get uh, turned around on the pattern very easy and you don't know how much I have in my um, reserves in my stash beside me my leftovers uh, paper because of not watching which side you know and if you're doing the right hand side and you're using a punch or a die, if you're doing the right side, you know the left side has to be turned over. Flip it, because it's a flip page. You're not gonna make it on the same side, right? So I just remember one is one way, and then flip the paper pack over and do it on the opposite side, and you're cool. You're in there, you're in like Flynn. Yes, is it in like Flynn or in like Flint? I don't know, I was discussing that with a friend. Uh, right, Tina? And we were discussing whether it was in like Flynn or in like Flint. And I can't remember which one it is. I even went into my stash seat, the Scotch double-sided tape. I started using that. I mean, it's stash time. When you do an album, it's definitely stash time. You want to incorporate all your jewels, all your silks and satins, all your ribbons and trims and bows and ribbon, everything. But I'm going to tell you, I did not match up each side of these roses so that one side was uh, matching the other side. I am not that OCD. 
um, because you can't see it. You have a whole center you're going to decorate. See? You can't tell whether the one side is matching, especially with all the lines going everywhere. All I needed to know was that I punched the hearts. That's what I'm showing you. So that I had the same amount of hearts on one side as I did on the other side because I'm ghosting the black. So I found the safest way to do this, even though you're going to have leftovers in your stash, even though you're going to have your leftover pile, you it's better to be safe than sorry. So I cut the whole length of the 12 by 12, right down the 12 inches, and then I cut it out. And then I put it as a ghost to cut only the one side that didn't have the hearts on it. And I think it's beautiful. And I'm telling you, I think I used a billion little pearls. You know the little wee howdy mini pearls? Those. Oh, yes. I tried. I am. Re I have really cut down on my Coca-Cola just so that you know. And thank you so much for your prayers and your concern for me. I'm doing very well um, as far as my blood pressure and things. Much better than I was doing. So thank you very much for your kind emails and comments. I'm telling you, if you have a YouTube channel, I know how much it means to you to have good friends that support your channel and subscribe. I don't call you subscribers, even though that's what YouTube does. I call you my friends, and you truly are. I have gotten to know so many of you over the five or six years I've been uh, crafting, I think five years on YouTube, and uh, please note that I do appreciate your comments. I tell you all the time, but I mean it. I am so sincere on that. I look forward to hearing from you. You don't put me out by leaving a comment at all. You make my day when I hear from you or my evening. I love answering your comments. Um, I love everything about it. And here, just make sure that it's very important to put the liquid glue on because you're ghosting. So once you have it down, just go with it. Don't second guess it, you know. It's like an exam. I learned through time that uh, don't, it, whatever your first, whatever you thought was the answer on an exam the first time, go with it. Once you overthink it, it generally ends up being wrong. The first thought is generally what the brain brings to remembrance. I've learned that over time. And especially going back to college later in life, you know, um, a lot of exams and uh, yeah so here I'm doing the corners right here so you put the bottom piece over top of the right hand side clip it together like this then you're gonna cut corner to corner on the inside here I'm just cutting enough to maintain and there you go just cut it and you have a perfect angle you have a perfect uh, square angle here to uh, lay out, I want to be able to tuck. This is another tuck. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, look, oh, you did it, Carol. It's an actual beautiful corner. Oh yeah, you deserve a little sip of pop. Yes, and I have truly gone down in my um, consumption of, co oh yes, look there. Yes, corners, corners, corners. Isn't that beautiful? Just thought we'd have some friends stop by. I enjoy them. They make my day and when I'm doing the edit, they surprise me as much as they surprise you and make me smile. It's all about the smiles. Yes. Truly, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And it does. So, um, I hope you've, you know, you've enjoyed this amount of time with me that we have so far. We have a lot to go, uh, that's for sure. But you can watch me in little increments. You don't have to take me all at once. Oh yeah, something happened with that one, so the ATG had to come out. I get those Pritt brand double-sided uh, runners. They're the red one, and it's really sticky. And of course, they were in a drawer, but I did something to that one, and it pulled out, so I'll just pull it back in later. So here we go, we've got to put, to always remember, that's one thing I, it's easy to forget, is putting your shadows, your shadow cards, like black, white, and then my card stock. I have to always remember that. And then on the bottom piece, 
going out there. I'm just taking off the markings. On the bottom piece, I had to extend it, and you'll see why later. And I'm so glad I did because I made this kind of a belt thing going on with, I think, six across pearls. And then I put the lacquer on there from Heartfelt Creations, the crystal lacquer, and left it overnight. Oh, it, I was so pleased with the look of it. So even if you cut things wrong or in the wrong spot or whatever, it will all work itself out. Truly, it will. Don't get, it will, oh yes, okay, yes, scratch your ears right over top. Uh, I think it was because of my boo-boo there. Maybe he stopped by to just encourage me there. So here we go, leave your little spaces, try and get them as even as can be. I think a sixteenth of an inch is what I, I, it looks like to me just looking at it. Of course I don't measure it. Woof. If I had to do that too, I'd be totally off my rocker. So, yeah, can you imagine that? Uh, you just have to eyeball it. And I wear glasses, and so it helps me. I'd never take my glasses off. No. Now we're going to ghost this side. What am I doing there? I'm always in thought. I'm always thinking, you know. It never stops when you're doing a project, does it? It doesn't matter what the project is. You're always thinking ahead. Thinking ahead, okay, uh, I don't know, I'm talking to myself, I don't know, why'd you do that? Let's go back and see, is it that side? No, nope. uh, come on, let's, let's put the glue on, then we'll decide. And like I said, so many pearls, oh, I was so glad I had a lot of those mini pearls, the real tiny ones you get at Michael's, they're so handy. And what I do is when I go shopping at Michael's, and I do a small haul on here, oh yeah, Hunter and I went one day, I wanted to look for that white paper. You know that white paper? I said I want, it's like a wedding paper. It's opaly, and it, I found the most beautiful paper. You won't believe it. I, it was hard for me to put one. It came in a pack of 100, and I will share the name of it because it has a gold fleck in the background, yet it has opal, white opal. It's beautiful. So I bought a pack of 100. I had two packs, so it would have been 200, but I thought, no, Carrie, you don't need that much. And it was, uh, I don't know if it was on sale for $12.99 a pack of 100 or $19.99, I can't remember. It was a little pricey, so I put one back, and I'm just sliding that into my garbage can. And then we're going to place this one. And you can see why it doesn't, you know, if you didn't put them up to one another, like but the two papers of the roses on the right and the left, you wouldn't be able to tell. And I know I didn't butt them up to check the paper because, you know, you're going to have a picture over it. You're going to have a wedding picture, hopefully, over top of it. And you'll see, I can't wait until the end of this project. I can't wait to do the front cover and the, the back, not so much, but this, the, 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 whatever you call it, it'll come to me in the front of it and uh, the spine. Now here I'm taking a minute to cut all of these out so that if I need to grab one of the sayings, you know, one of the tags, I have a lot to choose from. So it's really pretty, but it's really uh, plain in a sense, very elegant paper, and uh, but pretty. But if you, you, I needed to add that pink pop to it because of the teapot and teacup and I'll try to leave all the links at the end of the video and I never say this but if you're watching the video and you want to subscribe just press my head at the end of the video you know I don't have my head on there so you can see what I look like <laughs> I have my head on there so you press it and that and then you are directly subscribed at the end of the tutorial on the left hand upper corner that's why my head's there. So here we go, my face. Yeah, another little sip. Just a little sip. It's nice and cold and I just needed it. I'm in the thinking mode, so here we go. I've got the black background. Now we're gonna put the paper on here. And obviously because it's white, I didn't have to put a, a white edging behind it. I'm starting to have a lot of fun with this. 
I can tell you I wasn't having that much fun at the beginning. It was a lot to think about and uh, I could actually see smoke coming out my ears at certain sections at the beginning because um, yeah I didn't know when I should have a uh, where to put tags and where not to put tags and what to have inside the uh, sleeves and you know but I'm telling you now you can't stop this album making is wonderful you just uh, it's just getting the time so here this is what I was saying I cut this one off and I made like a leather belt it looks like a little belt buckle you'll see it at the end in the pictures then I'm going to well what I wanted to do is make a card so here's the start. I had this piece of paper that I cut the hearts out on the wrong side. It's supposed to be on the left side. So I thought, you know what, let's make a card, everybody. And that's what we're going to do. So get yourself a piece of pretty paper and then a plain piece for the back. Yeah, <laughs> pretty paper, rough, not rough, pretty, pretty paper. And uh, back it, you know, in this case, I love the silver. It just did something for me. I'm going to put it in the album, of course. It's going to be have room to have your uh, six, well, not six by eight. I think it'll be four by eight uh, to put photos, but we'll see. You need to put a gusset. So I always score it and then move it over one line and double score it so that uh, everything will pull together. I didn't know what I was going to put on the inside. But then it came to me that I'm not putting much of anything on the ins. Oh yes, I do on my card. I put a waterfall. I've got this waterfall. See how I made two score marks? One on the quarter inch and one next to it. And it'll all work out. Then the ATG, you'll see what I mean once I start designing it. Then take your glue, whatever glue you decide to use, but I can't tell you enough about this art glitter glue. Wow, is it sticky, and it gives you the moving time. So nice, and I'm thankful I got to show you a card in this tutorial. Isn't that nice? ATG, set it down, and then remember that little line of a gusset, that little, you know, so that you have the quarter of an inch and, oh yeah, I needed muscles there. I wanted to round out the corners. And then I thought, okay, what am I going to put on the inside? Should I make just this pocket? See how I was weaving it in and weaving it out? And I was going to put it there like that. But I'm pretty sure I changed my mind. And I'm making an actual purse out of that paper. I didn't like the curve on the top. So I thought, what about that? But then I totally went off of this. Wait till you see. I messed it up so bad I had to tear all the paper off. And you're going to enjoy that with me as well. I just had one of those moments. Look at me. So I thought, okay, let's do a tuck spot. Well, this didn't work out either. Although I did get this rim on it. I'll show you what I do with it later. I'm pretty sure I show you. I end up making a purse out of this with uh, that pulls out with an accordion little file to put some photos in and I'm going to put that off to the side but let's visit Michael's for a minute. I had just gotten home I stopped by there to see if they had some wedding paper just the white paper and I found these beautiful leaves. I really like the long look of them. Now you may say, okay, you're gonna, you would put plastic leaves on a project. Yes, I would. Um, tucking leaves like this is awesome because all you have to do is put gesso, just have a brush handy, a little brush uh, with a bit of gesso, put it over top and then spray them the green you want them to be. If you want that waxy look gone, that's all you have to do. But you know, this has three to four shades. Of green on it already so I'll have to see what I want to do with that. Now the few items I did get was this 29 pound vellum. All the vellum I have is 40 pound from way back in the day with Stampin' Up! So I thought it'd be nice to have a lighter weight that you could see through and I bought this box 80% off plus I had a 20% off your total order 
So guess what that cost me, that box? Absolutely nothing. And then the Fiskars blades were a necessity. Oh, I was having to switch out all the time my Fiskars cutter, which I love because it has that wire in the middle there where I can line up my paper. And so I bought those and what a difference it makes. I must have just jumped up on my chair. Now I wanted to show you this. I'm gonna decorate this box, obviously, but it is nice without being decorated. It was $14 with 80% off and then 20% off my total order. So that was a bonus for dropping in and picking up some paper. And that's the paper right there that I was searching for. It is an opal color, which is beautiful, with this gold fleck behind it. It's 65 pound, and it's called Shimmer Glimmer, I think. And look at that for wedding albums. Isn't that beautiful? You get 100 in this ream of paper, and I am thrilled to have it. I was going to buy two, and then I thought, no, Carol, just start with 100. And they said they were going to have it there, so I will see, because when I was in there last time, there was an eighty. But I thought 100 was great to start out with, and uh, there you have it. That's the paper I talked about all the time, was this shiny gold fleck paper for wedding albums. It's great, yes. And let's get started after I have a little sip of my pop. It's morning right now. It's early morning. These are from my friend Debbie. Hey Debbie, thank you so much. She made me all of, yeah, I'm getting out uh, the comparison with those other leaves, but she made me so many bags of bows. It's crazy in every color. Now this is my purse and I was trying to figure out what to do with it. It wasn't a purse until later on. But I did manage to uh, have this idea and make it into a purse. And last night, because it's the next day doing this edit, I, sorry, something came up yesterday. I had to stop. So now I'm going on. So this, putting this on the uh, crease line here that I made, the little tiny gusset, I just put the ribbon across it, gave me the idea to make a small purse out of it. So when you open the purse, it has a few little accordion spaces to put some photos in that are extra. Maybe you don't want to cut them down. Oh yes, and I stopped at the thrift store. Just for a minute, I got Hunter a great big fire truck and I saw this and the glass, um, you know I like the glass vases to put my markers in so I can see them, so that was great. And I, if I have two of anything, I always put the date on it so I know how old it was when I bought it because I do have to put this back in the drawer. So now I know the date that I purchased this and it helps me out. And then I threw the old one away, never to be seen again. Oh, that was giving me problems cutting. But it's like anything, you need things sharp. So let's get started on my little book. Okay, so when I cut punch this out right here. I put vellum, I'm sorry, I put acetate behind it because the closure's going to have like a uh, fastener there and I thought it'd be nice to have the acetate with the thickness of it to open and close the purse. So I put this back over top. I wanted to see through it so you could see that it was uh, a spot to put photos in. I just like the different look. I'm always looking for something different when you look at it. And I thought this was different. And it looks like a little scalloped smile. So there you have it. Then I'm going to cut it off. Hopefully not my ribbon. And I don't know if the ribbon will stay there. Uh, I can't remember what I did with that, but uh, we'll make a purse out of it. Now I'm going to move on and we're going to decorate this edge. And you don't have to do the entire edge if you're doing something like this, you know, the backward L there. I just decided to do the bottom and bling it out. So it didn't take away from the entire page. It would flatten with the magnet. I wouldn't have too much depth on there when I did put the magnets on. And I did leave uh, in this edit, 
I wanted you to see magnets, to know the sizes of magnets that you can get that are available to you for such an amazing price for so many. And uh, magnets, if you make albums, is very important. And I know the basic gray, I used to use them all the time until I found these other magnets. Uh, the price difference is, it'll totally blow you away. And the uh, magnetism, how's that? The way they magnetize is amazing. I think they're more magnetized than the basic gray myself, but that's my opinion. And I have basic gray and I use basic gray. It's just that they're pricey. And now I'm going to get my uh, magnets from uh, this place called Wish. And I'll, I put it all down so you could visually see the difference in magnets. And that'll be later on in the video. So here we go. We have that down. I am putting the magnets on now so that it closes because I'm going to cover each one of these spots. I have something I have designed to cover the magnets just lightly. And uh, these are the basic gray magnets. Let me say that. These are the basic gray. I want to use these up and move on to the other magnets I purchased. But the basic gray magnets, they're 10 millimeters by one millimeter. So that means they're 10 millimeters across and by uh, one meter is the depth. And it's the one millimeter you're looking for. You want them to be very, you know, thin, but yet be very magnetized. And these, I have found them, so that's great. And I want to share it with you because that's important. It's important to be able to save money and to get a good product that will be wonderful in your albums or cards. So let's move along. I'm just uh, helping the glue along the magnet. It's amazing how this glue works. It is truly a really sticky glue. Then I'm taking some of it off, which isn't necessary because I do have something to put there. Now the cello bags. I had uh, some of them from out of a uh, box of products I had purchased and I put them aside knowing I would use them one day and today's the day. I put heart uh, shaker bits, the same shaker bits that I put in the shaker uh, tuck spot there and I'm going to put it inside the cello bag because you can see through it and it's kind of nice to have a little remembrance you know in the book of uh, or you can you know use them at a table and sprinkle them out maybe on your first meal you make for your groom or vice versa <laughs> whatever and uh, yeah so I just had the perfect little size piece of paper to put there and I'm going to put one of these teensy weensy magnets I bought they are crazy tiny but are they ever magnetized? I mean, you have to keep that other magnet away because, I mean, it'll just, boop, it's right on there. So um, there it is. And I want to share something else about magnets with you. I think you're going to like, there it is. I wanted to show you. That's the actual size, three millimeters across. Uh, crazy small, crazy small. But we're going to go over that later. Now, I took the bow and I made it a little smaller than they were in the package. Thanks again, Deb. Uh, I think I made them smaller. Maybe I didn't. This looks pretty good. And I put it on top to hide the uh, magnet. And that's it. Then I, I actually make two of them. One with a white ribbon and then it has a pull tab. We'll do that later. And I'm just getting another page ready. It's just pages upon pages of uh, create creative work. I just love it. So now I have to cover. Yeah, I'm checking my nails to make sure my magnet didn't get up into my nail. <laughs> That's how tiny it is. So crazy cute. And it shuts those little heart pieces parts inside the cello bag. So that's nice. So if you have any of these lying around, it's just a thought. You could use them for a project. I put, just put some double-sided tape across there. Sometimes I just use normal tape scotch tape, whatever you want to hold that magnet down. 
But the double-sided tape is nice because it'll hold what, oh, look at that. Yeah, that's not going to work here. I'll fling that back over onto your space. Look how much space I have. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six by six. I'm telling you, that's what I created. Doesn't matter how large the area is. And then I found this bag of, I um, got it at Michael's years ago. And it is wildflowers on branches. And so I tore them off and I'm covering my magnets with them. And it worked like a dream. That's all you have to do. Just search the stash out and you'll find something. There they are. And they were too high. So I just tore the top part off and... I put that on the bottom. There they are, 99 cents, Martha Stewart Little Wildflowers, or whatever they're called. And I used those. Yeah, more glue now. Oh yeah, that's a good piece of glue. The reason why is because the flower's a little bit poofy, so I had to add a little bit more glue. But, like I said, the magnets worked, and these are the teensy weensy ones, the three millimeter by one millimeter. Isn't that insane? They're just they're so magnetized, I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you. They're crazy magnetized. So that's awesome. When you're doing albums, I'm going to say that again. And we'll go over that shortly. I just wanted to show you that. And now I have to figure out what am I going to do with this cutesy wootsy little cello bag. And I thought of putting it on top of here. Now, you, these are Spellbinder dies. The black one, anyway. The pink one uh, isn't, but I will leave. I'm going to go through my video and try to leave all the links if I possibly can. It takes me time to get over to my blog and do that, so be patient with me once the video goes up. It will not be immediately on my blog because I have to search it out and yada yada. So here we go. Yes, my granddaughter, Livia, she bikes to work on her bicycle and uh, she blew a flat this morning early so she called the nan and asked if I could come get her and take her to work so that's what I did early this morning so I've been up and at her it's a beautiful day today it's going to be around 80 and very humid of course here's my pink paper this is from Michaels you get a pack of three different colors if I'm right three or four and uh, it's just perfect for card making and for these albums and you get a choice of three or four different pink shades so that's nice so now I'm deciding okay what am I going to do with this am I going to outline it and I thought it kind of take you kind of thought of take you through the process of uh, what I decided to do here and this is a waterfall I'm getting into the waterfall thing now at first I really didn't like it I, I just I had issues with it in the first video where I was making that waterfall, but I think it was just too extreme, that one. It was like, you know, just too detailed, and this this one isn't going to be. And this is a card that uh, you can do, because I just scored it, uh, I think it's on a uh, quarter inch, and then I put a tiny gusset right next to it, so that you had room for the waterfall. And then close it up and I think it's a very pretty card, especially for a wedding card. They can put their photos if you know you just want a card, you're going to a wedding. And uh, I want to share something with you. Here's the concept I didn't get. I mean, I might as well just break open my brain cells to the world and expose what I didn't get about this waterfall card. You have to make your score lines you know, if you do it a quarter of an inch, you have to do it a quarter of an inch on all of your uh, waterfall pages, okay? And I did a quarter of an inch, no, I did a half an inch, and then I did a quarter of an inch on the pink. Well, that doesn't work because the quarter of an inch pink, you're not going to see it underneath the half inch white, Carol. No, you won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had to leave enough space so that you can put a picture on there. I mean, really, I know. It's worth a good laugh. Go ahead. Sometimes my thinker just gets thunked out and I can't think. So 
I thought, okay, I gotta take this off. This isn't working. I'm not liking this, okay? Rip it. Oh, yes, here we go. Isn't that nice? Then I thought, oh, you know what? Get it all off. It would have been easier to make another base out of the gray cardstock, but not me. Oh, no. I think I like the agony of it all. Uh, let's just see. Oh, look at that. Exploding. Exploding. <laughs> uh, exposing the black paper. Who knows what's under there, right? I don't know what's under there. It could be a surprise, you know? I should put surprises underneath all my mistakes because, um, no, I can't do that. Everybody be ripping my projects apart looking for a little something, something, something. But here you go. That'd be nice for a mixed media piece, wouldn't it? You have to always think on the positive side here when you're creating. That looks like, it looks like a buffalo running towards the left when I'm looking at it right here. Yes, ask me why I thought of that. Because I live close to Buffalo, New York. It's just on the other side of the Lake Erie here. So here we go. Now, okay, let's think. I'm not going to leave it like that, obviously. So I took another piece of pink paper, traced it out, cut it out because I had those nice blades. Oh, what a difference a day makes, I tell you. Just having a sharp blade, foop, foop, and it's done. Boy, I was struggling. Isn't it something? <clears throat> I ended up cutting it, and it's, you know, tearing. Oh, this needed some, oh, yeah, some real Bubba-style uh, glue. This was not going to fasten with just the liquid glue. Oh, no. And I didn't want you to see that big glob of black. So I put my honk and roll on there. I think this roll is five inches and it comes in six inches. I had that as well, you know, because you never know when you need a ton. But I use it sparingly. I, I don't want it. The same as the, uh, uh, what do you call that there, machine that I have. I bought the big daddy machine. Let's see. I always forget the name of it. The Xyron. I bought the 12 inch Xyron just for these purposes so that I could instantly have pages when I do an album. But am I using it? No, because Xyron tape isn't cheap either. So I'm trying to find the, you know, a good way of making sure it sticks, but not being crazy and using up. I didn't buy an extra roll of the Xyron 12 inch tape. So, or you could use the five inch. I mean, it fit perfectly. This is five inches and uh, across, so that would have been good, but I didn't buy extra, and I always buy extra, but it was just too expensive, and there was no sale on, so I had to let it go and use what I have. And then when I see a sale on it and a 20% off your total order coupon, that's when I pick that kind of stuff up. That tw It's amazing that 20% off your total order makes a huge difference. So here we go. I put the two strips off. I tore them off the pages I didn't use, right? The pages that I tore off, well, I, I cut them off, and I put them on this card. And the three heart paper was a mistake I made, so that's why it ended up a card. And mistakes always work out, don't they? So here I'm putting Debbie's bows. Oh, Debbie, I think there's like 75 per pack of every color. I have to have 50. I don't even know there's 50 hues, but I have so many bit. Look, there's the white. Oh yeah, just throw the stuff on there, Carol. When I get up looking around my craft room, uh, I just walk over and fling it onto my island where I work. And so if you see things flying, that's what I'm doing. I'm just going a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, we'll use this. And that's why I work myself into such a tiny space. Look at me. Always six by six inch space I work in. It's a phobia, I'm telling you. I could have that whole work area clean. You know when you watch tutorials and their work area is spotless? You don't know what's on the outer edges because that's a secret. You know, it could look like a bomb hit. We don't know, we don't see it. And in most cases, that's what it, what it is for me. I like to clean up at the end, but I, you know, Unless I get overwhelmed and I keep cleaning, you know, I have my OCD moments, of course. But here, I'm just filling up the edges. And, and I have a lot of product around me, too, so I can't blame the stuff I 
flick on there and leave it there. I added the white. I made the white smaller. You can see I'm doing that. I put it along the side. And doesn't that make, it's an easy peasy wedding card with POW. Because what, when the bride opens this up, bride and groom, when they open it up together, uh, they get the waterfall card uh, look on the inside to put their photos or write their journal memories. You know, I did it. Woo, I did it today. I mean, you can write that and put a photo on there, you know. I was just going to say, of you crying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, that was bad. I meant smiling, not crying, smiling. And then I had these flat flowers. When my friends were down, um, oh, I don't know how long ago, we went to... Uh, uh, Michael's and they had all these flat flowers. I think they were 20 cents a bag. It was crazy. And there was four of us fighting over them. So we sat in the aisle, literally on the floor with our baskets. And we just went one for you, one for you, one for you and put them in the baskets until we filled, we emptied out the whole store of these flat flowers. They came in every color, black, pink, uh, white mixture of black, pink and white. So they were perfect right out of the stash. And this roll of bling bling of these tiny teensy pearls, I got at a thrift store. You can tell because it has the metal opening in the center of the roll over there on the right. That's screaming thrift store right there. You don't buy things with metal in the center anymore. It would be plastic or paper or something. And I used the old glue gun. Oh yes. This is my sale, one of my six or seven glue guns. I like the detail tip on it. It leaks a bit, but hey, we're all going to leak a little bit when the time comes. So I don't have an issue with that. <laughs> Getting a little personal, aren't you there, Carol? Yes, it's hitting close to home, I'm sure. I'm 65. It may happen. We don't know. So anything that leaks, I'm friends with it. I, I don't mind. You leak away. You'll see it leaking on my Martha Stewart thing there. It just hardens up and you throw it in the garbage. And now comes my 400 billion mini pearls. I put them on all the little dots here. Oh yes, folks, all the little dots. Yeah, I don't miss one. And I make sure I put the art glitter glue on first. Don't trust your pearls. They seem sticky when you buy them. They aren't going to stay. And if you want... I mean, the art glitter glue will hold it there, but if you want double security over top of it, put glossy accents and let it drip down. It'll never come off. So there you go. And I had this from Michael's in my stash, these cute little Mr. and Mrs. Silver envelopes, and I had a little booger there. Something dripped. I don't know if, uh, I don't know, maybe the pizza. I have no idea. Um, I'm not generally a clean crafter. I don't watch things around me, you know, uh, and it ends up, I get this on that and that on this and end up having to cover things, but it all works out in the end because look at that envelope sitting on the flower. It looks fine. The silver matches the silver paper in the background, the beautiful font of Mr. and Mrs. with the diamond because we're doing diamond and pearls. So you get your little diamond. Now open it up and back to the stash. I had this gorgeous lace. And it's from the uh, ribbon store. I'm going to leave. Yeah, let's get some art glitter glue under there. Art glitter glue is the fastest drying glue I have ever seen. I'm not kidding. I thought your glue gun glue was fast drying. This has it beat. It is crazy. And that's what we want, right? Sorry for that. I'm getting emails this morning. This is a two-parter. I think I told you that. So here we go. You must be thinking by now, oh, Carol, are you ever going to get to the end of this tutorial? Yes, I am. So <laughs> that's why I skipped a few things here. I put a line of hearts in black and white. The black I put down fully on the inside flap to the left. I did it flat. You can't get under there. It's not a tuck spot, but I put the white as a tuck spot. I found this cardboard memory sticker that I had in my stash in a wedding book I actually bought. Remember I bought that $30 wedding book? They went on at Michael's for $4.99 and I bought a billion of them. Uh, yes, 
they were 30 bucks or 4.99 you had to so here we go Martha Stewart again I am punching and my new paper that's what I used for this glorious waterfall I'm into it I'm telling you uh, everything I make now is going to have some type of waterfall something or other on there because I understand it now you have to every time you make your sheets make them all at once make your strips all at once so that they're not uneven yes and don't go in with your scissors cutting a little bit here a little bit there you will end up with a mess just cut down your paper all the way and then cut from that paper because you'll know the width will be perfect then score it on the half inch I find half inch is really nice looking because because you can put a strip of paper to match underneath there and uh, then you wait till you see the closure oh yes yummy yummy closure on this waterfall so excited I love shopping in my stash because I'm not trying to promote anything in this video to buy anything in this video uh, if you want to come shopping in my stash you're welcome yeah just knock on the door I'll leave the light on for you <laughs> how's that you come on down and come shopping oh yeah we'll have a blast you never know what you find in here five years of sticking stuff everywhere oh here I go okay don't do this okay don't do this this is what I'm telling you I'm showing you what not to do for some reason that paper was out though I had to do it so here we go I don't know I don't know I had to do another sheet because I had this practice thing going on yeah that's not gonna work either Carol but you can cut it down yes keep that uh, this is one thing I keep close to me I have the honkin Fiskars cutter you know the self cutter big big one as well but it takes up too much space so I saved that for the real you know muscle jobs that I need to cut but this Fiskars cutter is my fave due to that wire in the center of the cutting bar I love it I love it and I love the Stampin Up cutter trimmer I guess they're called because of having the score blade attached to the cutting blade so that's awesome too they're all awesome anything that cuts is awesome I don't have a fave one over the other there isn't that paper gorgeous and doesn't that make a nice elegant wedding card it really does I love it I would love to get it then you could make the envelope to match uh, you will see what I'm doing with that oh yes so then I went back to the old stash and in that album that was a cream wedding album that big one you know the ones at Michael's for $29.99 and you have all of the it's more for scrapbooking because it has the plastic pages that you slide your uh, work into but for $4.99 all of the real estate all of the embellishments everything you get with that it is a buy I had to I filled up two or three carts with them I couldn't believe it five dollars you know that was a good buy and put them away and I gave them as gifts here I just took my uh, the same punch that I punched the corners out of the paper and uh, marked it, punched it, punched the corners, leave enough space there, and you're it. Actually, you only have to do the top one. What are you talking about, Carol? You only need to do the top one because that's where you see the curve, the little curvature up there. And yeah, cut this down everything you know it's a half an inch so cut it to a half an inch it is getting you know we only like the things we know and repetition is the key to learning uh, ask my children now they're all men but uh, when they were younger repetition is the key to learning do we have to do this again oh yes you do it probably again and again if you don't change your attitude <laughs> Just a little sharing, a little sharing there. Yes, when you share, it means you care. Yeah, you know, um, it's like criticism. Constructive criticism is good. It teaches you something. But criticism alone is not healthy. It's not good. You don't want to criticize just for criticizing sake. But if you're trying to help somebody and they can take it, 
constructive criticism is fabulous. I love it. I love it because I want to know the things I'm doing wrong and I'm learning. I, this is all a learning process. Art is a learning process. So uh, once you get that down, you don't get as frustrated, believe you me. And then I went to the old stash and this 12 by 12 pack. Remember, it's always remembered, but when the, um, you could get a big paper pack, I think it was 48, or I don't know, or 95 sheets, but they were so thin. It must have been like 20 pound cardstock, but you got tons of color. And now I have all of these packs that I bought five years ago that were on sale, but the paper's so thin. Well, there you go. Look at that. Use them for strips on the um, gusset marks, on the gussets in between here. And it works out perfect. It just has the, it looks like confetti. I mean, you can't get any sweeter than that. And I just placed them there, and then I went back and glued them all in. There I go with the cutting. Yeah, it's an issue, I think. I just, uh, my eyes are crazy for seeing just little, little things. Uh, here we go. What am I going to put down there? Keep going, Carol. There's tons of them. I think I put down uh, with this ring, and then I cut it down. Yeah, look at that. My memory's working, and it's early this morning. Um, there we go. Oh, yes. Isn't that pretty? It's so, um, it's there, but it's not. It, it's just so soft. This paper is very soft in nature when you look at it. It has the light gray and the white in it is almost the same as the paper I bought at Michael. See that love behind it? It has kind of like that metallic, shiny, like the papers that, you know, when I went to Michael's and I showed you that. So take the corner off. And then I found a sticker that said bride. I couldn't, it didn't have a groom sticker to match it. So I put bride and then the bride can put just her little special photos on these pages. And isn't that sweet? You don't need them on all of the pages. You need it on the top and on the, there's the stickers right there. That was in that album. And they're poofy, like you put uh, glossy accents on it. They're that wet look and they're raised up and they're just gorgeous. They're just gorgeous. I was so happy. And even though it's cream colored, it has the black behind it. And that's it. That's exactly what it needed. It needed that. Yeah, feeling the poofiness of it. I love it. And of course, let's just put a little bit of diamond. I found these diamond squares I had in my stash. Perfect for corners. You just put a few going up. Don't cover the whole page. Just put a few. Just make a statement. That's all you have to do. That's my statement, but I'm going to go over to the left with more of them. Yeah, I'm not going to leave a half a statement. I'm just going to, you know, do the bottom and a few diamonds going up the sides. And there you have it. Yeah, come on. Just move it and I have to probably cut one off. And yeah, put it back in there. It must have fallen out. And there you have it. Stick a ruler up while the glue is wet to make sure it's straight across if that's what you like to do. And it sure does help because the ruler will push it up into place. And there you have it. Isn't it cute? And then I'll show you the belly band I'm going to use. And this is what I'm looking for. Okay, what do I use to go down this and hold it? And I think it's gorgeous. I really do. And then in the spine there, I put another... Uh, or a piece of beautiful ribbon and if you look closely at that ribbon it's gorgeous 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 it's sewn in it's such a different uh, ribbon you'll see it in the pictures and just do a quick stop and then zoom in and look at that uh, I'm sorry lace not ribbon the lace in the spine on the inside gorgeous so here we go I'm thinking now what am I going to do with this card I am not putting it on top I need to create something for the top of this today, but uh, I have to tell you, if you do a half inch pull out, like you're designing half, you know, this has a half inch gusset. You have to use it for your, you can't use it on a page because the page A is not as wide as this and you need that half inch 
uh, on the spine, okay? If you put it on a page, it would be too heavy and too bulky. So you can't do that. And um, so that's going to be for this side of the cover. And it's gorgeous right there. It really is. And it flips. Yeah, you have to know which way you flip. So that's why I always put the glue on the back of whatever has to be glued down. Or I, you know, I'll get in a hurry and then I'll glue the wrong side and put it in. And another disaster I have to clean up. So I went ahead and it's going to flip up. And then on the bottom, it's going to flip out. And that's the way I did this one. And I can't wait to show you the pages of all the flips and flops and dies. I have like a billion dies out of my stash that I want to experiment with. So we'll do that later on. And this is how it's going to go. The page is going to flip up and that uh, flower shaker card thing that's in there will give it the heaviness I like. And isn't that pretty with the bag there? You uh, you have to make a tuck spot to tuck it unless you want to glue the back down. But then how are you going to get the shaky bits out? You'd have to shake the whole album to get it out. So that wasn't going to work. Or you put corner, little corner things and slide them into there. That's an idea. But I didn't do this there. I didn't do it. You're going to see I changed it up of course. It's all about flicking the pages and saying, let's do that. And then you say in the next month, no, 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 that's not going to work. Oh, let's do this. No, that's not going to work. Okay, let's go back to this. This is what you do. You're just, okay, let's close it. And then I thought, well, what if we put the purse here? It wasn't a purse idea yet. That's why I'm looking at it. It's just a piece of paper with a scallop smile on it for now. And there we have the back page that's already set in stone. I know that's going on the back page. So let's proceed to make the other cello bag. So I, good thing I had two of these matching little cutouts. And we're going to put it on the, I think it's the back side of the cello bag because it has the fold on it. So I do think it's the back side. And I decided to do white and pink, you know, shake it up a little bit. Yeah. Why have pink and pink and all matchy-matchy? That's generally what I do. I like matchy-matchy. But I decided not to matchy-matchy. On this, I changed up the ribbon color, white and pink. And then you we're going to put the magnets. Of course, look, at these are like 100 magnets. <laughs> I keep them on the side of my baby powder shaker thing that I use when I'm doing embossing, working with embossing powder. So I stuck it to that. It's still there right beside me. Oh, yes. Anything that has a magnet on it, those magnets will stick. And that is just the most. Yeah, and, and getting it, it's almost impossible. It's just like, really? Come on, get off there. What's the matter with you? Then I put double-sided tape over it, and then I'm going to place this so it finds its spot. And it did. Now I'm going to, you know, get frustrated with that. Oh, yeah, let's cover it. I don't want it going anywhere. I think that was traveling around to my craft space here for a little bit. I took it out of the edit because I looked like I was not in control of my project. <laughs> yeah, you have to be in control of your project. Back to the little Martha Stewart uh, blossom flowers there. I think they're blossoms. And then I added two because I could see the little magnet out the side. So I went back and I put two on each of them. And it's cute. You could put it all the way across. It's just looks like a wedding little bag. It's really cute. And I used my hot glue, of course. And there you have it. Can I think it? Isn't that nice? But I did not want to keep grabbing the flap to open it. So I just grabbed some pink ribbon, cut it in half. Oh, I was thinking, I found these. In, yeah, let's grow a flower while I'm um, trying to think about this. Yes, flowers are beautiful. I thought of taking this off and hanging this, but honestly, the weight of it threw the daintiness of it all off. The weight of the metal was not for this cello bag. No, get rid of it, Carol. Sit and stare at it for a little while, you know, until you get cross-eyed, and then put it back and say, let's just get a piece of rip and fold it in half, tuck it under there with some glue, and call it a finished bag. There you go. And that's why my videos are so long. 
It really is. I like to kind of share the process. Everybody has their style. Everybody has their style of instruction on YouTube, right? Some like to just teach, just, you know, they, they're in teaching fashion and that they, they don't stray from it. That's what they do. I love instructional tutorials. Mine aren't, they, they have a bit of instruction, they have a bit of um, haul in it, a bit of this, a bit of that, and a whole bunch of fun. That's what I like to have, a whole bunch of fun, a whole bunch of smile and laughing, and, and hopefully inspiration and learning comes from it. But uh, that's, you know, that's what I like to do. And those diamond uh, raindrops on the left were in my stash. I did a project years ago for my bestie, a great big canvas where here's where I'm filling it up with the hearts. Fill it up. That uh, is from Michael's right there. So when the sales come on, that's a good, good uh, shaker bits bottle because you get between four and six different colors and you just have to twist the lid to get it out. So here's what we have so far. I'm just, you know, if I'm kind of feeling like I'm just not getting there, I get out what I did and I look at it and I say, Carol, you are getting there. You just, uh, you know, I want my projects to be just right. So here we go. I'm covering, I'm covering the back so that I know this is, so that all I have to worry about is whether I put it in upside down or not. <laughs> yeah. But I do know this is going on the back. Yes, this is for the back. I know that. We've already prepared that thought. And so I'm going to put some glue on there. And when it's time to put everything down, like actually design the video, or the video, design the video. Yeah. Uh, oh, here I go, throwing out my uh, laces. I just went to my laces and picked out one of each design that I have and I'm throwing them on there. I didn't want them too long so I took out the shorter of my laces and trims and whatever else I thought I could use there. So uh, we're going to go through that motion just for a minute just to see. I want to surprise you with what I do with all of this lace. It's beautiful isn't it? And I haven't used it for such a long time. I bought a ton of it when it was on sale. I just went crazy and I'm glad I did because the price back then was so affordable and now the trim and laces are a little bit more expensive but I found a place online that um, is astronomical and look at that. Oh there it is, the heart lace. That's going to be my belly band. I'm just going to throw that in early. So here we go. Uh, I have to cover those magnets, but I didn't want to take that big poil off the center of it. Uh, I know it's a pearl. People are going to think I talk like that. I don't. It's a pearl, but I called it a poil. And now I have to decide on the flaps, but this was too much. Why am I covering up that beautiful white paper? I did not, I like the look of it if it was going to be on a card alone. This would be magnificent. But I did not, it's just too out, it just takes away from the uh, elegance of it, to me, to me. So I just took out all my die cuts that I sat that day and die cut. And uh, this is where, I, and if I need extras, I've already cut the one. I don't cut too many multiples, generally maybe two of each. And there it is. That's it right there. That's what I end up using on each side. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and design. Uh, hey, Tuesday, I'm using your flowers there, your nice flat embellishment flowers. I love it. I'm going to leave the link over to uh, Tuesday's site so you can go over and check out her scrapbooking. It's wonderful. I have just guest designed for Tuesday. And uh, yeah, so here, yeah, that paper looks terrible behind that frame. I did not use it. But you have to lay stuff out and see so that you have something to compare things to. And I needed to tone it down. Just tone it down. So I'm checking out to see, uh, you know, what the, oh, there. Once I took out that heart, that is called, um, let me see, it's right in front of me. I took it out so you had it. 
It's called Double Heart Banner Die, and it's made by Memory Box. It is a beautiful, beautiful, thin, delicate die. So I used my 140 pound white cardstock to cut that. And I didn't raise it up. I, I, I don't think I did. I, I may have done it too high, uh, but not too high, but too high. You know what I'm talking about. And then, um, yeah, I gotta see what works. I do end up putting that, I think, that strip of flowers that we put the uh, glossy accents on, I end up using that at the bottom, making it a tuck spot. And the uh, you don't necessarily have to have dies that edge dies, you know. You can use your edge punches, or you can use just dies that are intricate, and cut them in half and use them as toppers. There's so many possibilities, you know. Um, I know I don't have the trillion dies that are out there as far as having, you know, the uh, what is it the toppers of that but look at this die of that little piece the black one you could cut that in half do you see what I mean here so as you can see I'm going to make a list of all the sizes of the magnets that I got on this site called wish this is the teensy weensy three millimeters across by one millimeter thick and the one millimeter is the key to having great magnets because they're super thin. Now the 10 millimeter, they are the basic gray size, but I prefer, now that I see them, the 12 millimeters by one millimeter. I'm going to be ordering more of the 12 millimeters. I have a hundred of them for now, so I think I'm pretty good, but at the price being so good, I'm going to order just the 12 millimeter because they're the perfect size. The 10 it's a good size, but the perfect size to me is 12 millimeters by one millimeter. Then you have the 15 if you have something super thick, and then the 20 millimeter, and it, the 20 millimeter, you can't get it in one millimeter thickness, so you have to go to two millimeters, but you can see it's not that bad. And then to save on your magnets, go to your hardware store and grab some of these O-rings. The O-rings, just get them a size a little bit larger than your actual magnet. The only ones my hardware had was the larger ones. So here's the teensy weensy, you can see it. And the 20 millimeter, it will be great for this O-ring at the bottom. And so will the 15 millimeter, that's a nice size too. But like I said, uh, I couldn't get any. And this one my husband made for me at the shop. And it's super big, but you could use that for the 20 millimeter by 2 millimeter as well. So uh, once I got this site down, you know, that I found this site, Wish, and I went over there, and for $50 US, I got 500 magnets for $50. 500 magnets. Now, the 10 millimeter by 1 millimeter, this is your basic gray. And in basic gray, you get, I think it's, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 16, you get 20 magnets a package. And I, I don't know if the 20 magnets was $10.99. I can't remember. It's costly. But you can get free shipping if you live in the States. I'm in Canada, but seriously, the shipping cost was not bad at all. I mean, with the shipping, $50 gift certificate that I had, like a Visa gift card, and I bought 500 magnets and the shipping included. So that was great living in Canada. So I hope this helped you and you get to see the sizes. At the end, you can still shot this. That's why I put it on the paper for you because I wanted you to see the different sizes and what would work for you. And then over on my blog, I said I'll leave the link. All right, so that was insightful for me and I wanted to share it with you. So here we go. I die cut one of these out, another one, I only had one, and I'm going to put it on each side of the flap, the flip, whatever you want to call it. I love this die. It's a spellbinder die. It's a nestability die, so it's a lot of dies nesting inside one another. This is the, sec the third, I think. Uh, nestability in the set. 
down. So you have the large one, the next one, and then this one. And uh, like I said, this die is double heart banner. And the number is, I'll give you the number. Let me turn it over here. It's by memory box, 7390-99083. So it's 7390-99083. So I think this style number is 99083. That's all you need to remember if you want to order that one. It has a beautiful spot to put a sentiment, but I'm going to fill it with the glossy accents. In my case, I'm going to use the heartfelt. And that is the 3D crystal lacquer. And it's the same as glossy accents. It's thinner. I shouldn't say it's the same. It's much thinner. So yeah, when you let it out, it really flows. And then I thought in the corner there, maybe that tuck spot uh, die that I showed you with all the hearts, but I thought to use something small. And like I said, right here, I'm just showing you my thoughts. I don't want something big on this panel because I am going to fill both flaps on each side so they're identical. You know when I make cards, in that last wedding card I made, I like when you flip it out, I like each side to be identical so that's what I do there and now I was thinking of making um, just cutting it off putting some diamonds down the side but I I don't know it just didn't do anything for me so I let that go I don't even think I have filled it up yet I am waiting for just the right die and I will put it under there to cover the magnet and when you cover it with the double-sided tape, your magnets, don't forget to take the double-sided tape off when you put your cardstock or whatever embellishment you choose to put over it to cover it. And there you have it. I'm using double-sided tape that I found in my drawer. And this is awesome. I mean, it's double-sided and it works great because I'm putting the liquid glue on it. Come on, get out there. I have to poke it with the uh, pin. There you are. Isn't that something when you watch it in fast motion? And what I'm going to do is cover it with uh, pearls, obviously, but down the sides I'm going to put perfect pearls. I opened up one of my cupboards and said, oh, good night. Look at there's like 500 perfect pearl bottles in my uh, organizer thingy. So I got out the, it's the wedding one. I'm not sure what I should have left it out but like I said it'll be on my blog it's a really nice pearl white and uh, yeah and it didn't even squish down or anything like perfect pearls they're perfect pearls they go on like pearls and if you don't you know make them uh, so that they have that twirly thing on the top it'll stay like perfect I loved it and in the morning they were just as nice as I put them on the black dots so here, this is my pearl pack. So I'm trying to get out, uh, once again, my mini pearls. They seem to last forever. Oh, I found these little flowers. See them? They have little diamonds on them in the middle. So I put one on the top right there. I thought it was kind of cute. It was, you know, a little flower. I could have went all the way around, but I thought it was too much. You know, just add one at the top, one to the bottom and then go with the little pearls. And I think it just added a little something to it. it. It isn't too much because it's only the inside page. You know, I have five front back pages to do yet, but I do believe you're gonna really enjoy the pages next. I'm going to do all five of them in the next tutorial. So it'll probably be a little longer tutorial as well. And then in the next tutorial, I will cover the actual wedding album and then one more I think there's three tutorials will be uh, designing oh excuse me oh I love pearl Ooh, look at that I love the vellum oh yes he loves it all and like I said the box that I'm going to put the book in when I'm finished it is going to have uh, decoration all over it too to match this now what I did right here is I put a, a I think it was eight rows of pearls on that, uh, you know, that roll that I got at the dollar store and nothing's a dollar. And I added the crystal lacquer, and I'll say it again, it's just the same. 
it's just a little more liquidy than your glossy accents. And I filled that up. There it is. You should be caught it right quick. It's a row and I cut off, I don't know, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, maybe ten uh, rows over. And I thought it made like a nice band. It looked really good when it was dry. Here's the lacquer. You can see how it comes out nice and runny. And this is really good for covering your pearls because you don't have to use as much because it's a little more liquidy. So if you're worried about your pearls falling off, just drop a touch of it on top of the pearl, let it ooze down, and you will be great. Yes, you can see I had my jammy bottoms on there as I'm sitting there. It probably was late at night when I was doing this one. So here we go. I'm, uh, I'm not zoomed in. I don't know why. It had to be at night because my brain doesn't work as well at night when I'm working. So... Um, I thought, okay, I gotta go out there and get these, um, get the crystal lacquer on. There you go. Crystal lacquer there, crystal lacquer there, and right there. And it's perfect. Oh, speaking of perfect, look at that. My perfect pearls. There was three sweet white colors there, but I chose the opal kind of one. And I don't have it, and I'm not getting up to get it, unfortunately because I want to get this voice over completed for you so uh, we can move on to the five pages next and that's rather exciting for me we're almost getting down to the end thank you if you join me for the entire almost two hours and 20 minutes long this has to be my longest tutorial I don't know but look at how nice it is look at those pearls they are perfect pearls I don't know why I didn't think of it. You know, I'll tell you why. Here we go. I'm jumping right in there. They were in a closet, a cupboard on my island on the side. Um, yeah, there, there it is. Oh, now how was I going to read that? I wonder. I couldn't. I don't know why I zoomed. Oh, zooming back in. <laughs> you never know. And then I put that down on the bottom so I had another tuck spot. That's, I put the uh, crystal lacquer on top of that and let it sit overnight as well. And on the rose, which I will keep there. I think it's really pretty. And I just stuck the heart there just to show you that it is working wonderfully. Okay, so now, oh yes, give me that worm. Oh, my brains. Yes, my brains were overloaded too. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to decorate that. I wanted to show you. That's going to the back. This flip thing is going there. I took out all my laces. I'm just winding down. This is what I do when I wind down. I wanted to show you everything that has been completed so far. So I'll just do, you've seen it, so I'll do a quick overview for you. I put the uh, pictures on there so you could see what it looks like. Doesn't that look pretty with it all dry? and shiny like that you don't even have to put a sentiment there and there you have it you can see there's my other waterfall you can see that I need to have that on the cover because it's wider there's the ring pillow I made and here's a few of the tags I'm going to put in it's a cute little LDRS creative tag there's the cello bags with the little magnets on them you can see I put the drawstring and there we have one of the banners That'll keep something down on the page. Here's the nice uh, wedding book card. And there you have it, my friends. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for your patience and your comments and for subscribing. You do make my day when I get your comments. So have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy the pictures and you have a blessed week. There are the hearts that I'm going to make the belly band. Oh yeah, that other thing was a belly band. So everybody, have a great day, and I'll see you, bye, on the next tutorial. Take care.